When I look at number 21 to find the vertex, x equals negative b over 2a. I am going to write down, Brody, what is my b? 8. So it's negative 8. So it's negative b. So now that becomes a positive 8. I'm going to take 2 times my a value, and my a value was 2 fifths, right? So we actually have 8 divided by... 4 fifths. I don't know if you remember, and you can do it on your calculator, 8 divided by 4 fifths, but that is the same as taking 8 times 5, 4, 5, 4. So 4 goes into 8 2 times, and 2 times. So my vertex point, this x, is 10. So now when I plug in 10 into the equation, I'm going to that f of 10, because that's my vertex point, is equal to, and I'm taking 2 fifths times 10 squared, just putting it all in my calculator, minus 8 times 10, plus 1. Isn't 21 2 fifths? Oh, I don't get 20. That might be it. <laughs> <laughs> Two fifths in that equation. So plug that in, you should have. Negative 75. I think I nope. Wrong. Negative 39. I was a little off. So then again, you want to make that table of values. I am not checking the workbook today, but I am going to check. Keep going. Vertex form looks like this. The A value has the same effect in it as in standard form. The vertex is located at HK. Notice the built the built-in subtraction sign. This is very similar to the point slope form from linear functions. So when we did linear, we had y equals m x minus x1 plus y1. Our standard form for our quadratic. Standard form for the quadratic, I have it up on the front board. That's when you have y equals a x squared plus b, x, plus c. Now today when we found the vertex, we had to go through finding x equals negative b over 2a, then we had to find the y point. If you can have yours in this form, where you have a, that tells us what about our quadratic graph? It tells us if it goes up or down, right? So this tells us if it goes up or down for our quadratic, and it also tells us the width. This just like here was our kind of like our point that we were using. It was an ordered pair, x1, comma, y1. When we look at our quadratic, it's our vertex. So if it's written in this form, the vertex is at h and k. Notice in front of the h it's a minus, in front of the k it's a plus. So you got to be careful just like before when we were doing our absolute value one. So it says, if you are asked to graph on that next page down, and you're given the equation, so today's worksheet are all going to be written in this vertex form. Please at the top over here write y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So that's the form we are looking at. So it says, first thing you want to do is identify your h and your k. So notice it's a minus, so h is 2. It is not negative 2, it's 2, because the formula here is a minus. We look at the k, and it was plus negative 4 or minus 4, so our k is negative 4. What that tells me right away is my axis of symmetry is at 2, because the vertex is at 2, negative 4. That tells me right away I can go to 2, negative 4 and plot that point and put my axis of symmetry. And then again, you would pick those points. So at this point, what we know, this is kind of this x, y table. We know that 2 is in the middle. And we know at 2, we get negative 4. So they picked 1 and 0. They said when you plug in 1, you get negative 1. So 1, negative 1. When you plug in 0, you get a positive 8. <laughs> so they plugged in 0. 3 times this was 0 minus 2, so when you're looking at that, keep in mind that this was 3 times, this was a negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So we had 3 minus 4, that's how we got negative 1. Here we're taking 3 times negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is not negative 4, it's 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 4 gives us 
8. So then once you find these two points, you just reflect them over and find the other two. So you're, because of that line of symmetry, you should get a curve, okay, each time when you do these. So write your equation on the top of the next page. Please write y equals, it is always going to be a, and it is x minus h squared plus k. So the first thing, is my parabola going to go up or down? My parabola is going to go down, okay? Why do I know my parabola is going down? Because it was a negative 1. Next thing I want to identify, my h value is 2. The k is also 2, which means my vertex is 2, 2. So I'm going to go to 2, 2. Do I know my axis of symmetry? Axis of symmetry is the same as the x-coordinate, x equals 2. Put that nice dashed line, because that's where it helps us to find those points. You're going to see that today's graphing is probably a lot quicker than what we were doing yesterday. So, since we have our vertex being in the middle, and we have it at 2, we probably picked 1 and 0. When you pick 0 in that equation, you've got to be really careful now. It doesn't just come out as 2, so you've got to be kind of careful substituting it. The equation was negative 1, and then it was x minus 2 squared plus 2. So when I plug in 0, I'm going to have negative 1 times 0 minus 2 squared. Some of you are forgetting your squares when you're doing these. You'd like to just put 0 minus 2. So when I look at this, this is actually a negative 1 times what? Times, no, not times negative 4. Negative 2 squared is going to be 4, right? So this is a negative 2. When you square it, it is positive. And then we add a plus 2. So I have negative 4 plus 2, which equals negative 2. So I have 2 of was at 2. At 0, it's at negative 2. Is it going in the right direction? Yes, because if I plot just those two points, right, I can see that my parabola is going down, which is what I want. So I now want to take a look and plug in 1. I'm going to plug in 1 to the original equation. It's 1 minus 2 squared plus 2. So that gives me a negative 1 times negative 1 squared. That is going to be 1 plus 2, which gives me a positive. So at one, it was at one. Now, what's nice about that is I now know symmetric. So now plot the other two points on the other side. So if it was at one, one, that means that three also has to be at one. It has to be exactly symmetric. And if I go to the point over at four, where does it have to end up? Down at negative two. Now, some of you, don't trust yourself, and so you want to plug in all these numbers. That's okay. But what I really need you to do is just probably show me the work for the first one. And the biggest mistake is that people will just go, oh, if I plug in zero, it's going to be positive two back here. You can't do that. It's not in standard form. That only works when the equation's in standard form. You have to plug in these x values into your equation to check it. Okay? So take a look at the next one going down. In problem two, they give us the equation. First question they ask, is the parabola opening up or opening down? What would you say if we are looking at that one? So some of you are with me, so I'm going to have you raising hands. I appreciate in this one we just set up, but as we go through the rest of them, I'm going to have you please just don't blurt it out. So if we are looking at this, did you get off another one? So I need you to get this if you were doing this. You missed the last one that we got. So if we are looking at wide or narrow, Lulu, we'd say? Wide. This one is going to be very wide. And the reason it's wide is because we have one-fifth rather than one, right? If we are looking at our vertex, Emma, are you ready? No. Keeping in mind, it's always x minus h plus k. So why am I saying no right away when you say negative 3? Because Emma, it has to be, the h is just 3, right? 3 and 4, okay? So now it says we want to make some predictions. 
If I wanted to make it wider, what do I need to change? I want you to write down what you would need to change. Thinking of our parent function is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So what do I need to change? Write it down. If I want the parabola to open the other direction, what would I need to change? If I wanted the parabola to have a vertex two units to the left of where it is now, how, what would I change? And then question number seven is asking you, if I wanted this parabola to have a vertex three units to the right and four units higher, what would I need to change? So we're going to look at each of those. So take a minute and think about them. Put something on your paper, looking at, and if you want to just tell me, like I changed the A, the H, the K, you can write it that way. You can say I'd make the A however you'd like to do as you're looking at this to make it wider or open up or open down. And we're gonna make it wider. Oh, what would I change? The A. the A. And how would I make it wider? I'd have to go something that is smaller than one fifth, right? So anything where A is less than one fifth, but it still has to be bigger than zero, right? So it's going to be like, what if I had 1 12th, right? That would make it wider. 1 20th would make it wider. Anything, and you can come up with any number you wanted in there, but it has to be less than 1 5th or 0.2 if you were thinking of that in your desk. If I wanted it to be in the opposite direction, A, H, or K? A. A. And again, A now would have to equal a negative. negative. Okay? Negative makes our parabola go down. So if I wanted the parabola vertex to be two units to the left, so if we are thinking this one is located at three, four, and we want to go two units to the left, that means are we adding two or subtracting two? We're subtracting two. Subtracting two from three would lead us at one, comma, four. How did I get that? Because I've taken three minus two, two is moving to the left, right? By subtracting two, kind of goes with our translations when we are doing, I don't know if you remember last year when you translated or moved. If you're moving to the left, you are always subtracting from your x coordinate. And as we look at that last question, it says this time we want to move it three to the right, and we want to go four higher. So when we think of where our vertex was, it was three to the right, means we are adding on three to our original, okay? And our original vertex was at four, and if we want to go four higher, we are going to be adding because you're going up. So that new vertex would now be at six and eight. Okay. So when you move to the right, you are going to add. Okay. And you're always adding to the x coordinate. Okay. So you're going to add to the x coordinate. When you are moving it up or down, you are going to add or subtract from your y coordinate. So as you are looking at that. Um, your homework, that's all we have for notes. Some of you are going to be working on page, um, we have the vertex first, this is page 36 and 37. So, vertex, Maya, start me off with the first one. Where's my vertex? Negative 2, 5. Is that parabola going up or down, Owen, as I'm looking at number 1? It's going down. So I know it's going down, and then I want to what circle is it wide, normal, or is it narrow? So you're going to be thinking about those. Joel, if we look at number two, where would you say my vertex is? One, three. It's going to be at one, three if we look at that. And Henry, if I'm looking at number three, where is my vertex? Negative four, negative three. So watching that plus, right? So that negative four and negative three. So you're going to answer each of those. The equation for the axis of symmetry, that's nice, right? It's always our x equals. When we go to number four, what am I going to have for number four, Brooklyn, for my vertex? Zero. Yeah, because there isn't anything. It's not x minus, so it's x minus zero, so it's zero and three, right? Am I still having to make a table of values? Yes. Yes, around that vertex. I need to go two points on either side. I would always try to put points on the side where zero is, right? They're easier. Like if you can put zero in, do you have to? No. So you are going to finish those, and then down here they're asking you to write some different equations. 
I want you to turn back to your workbook from yesterday because that's the page right before. And I want you to look at question number 16 and 17. So 16 and 17 from yesterday, so that's on page 35 or 34. So it says, I need a graph that opens down and the vertex is 0, 4. And so if the vertex is 0, 4, what is that trying to tell you about the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c? What is this? Do we have a b value if it's the vertex is at 0, 4? No. No, because it's right on the x-axis. So you get to come up with an equation that has sum of times x squared, right, plus 4. What kind of number do I have to have in front of that in question number 16? A negative. Does it matter if it's wide or narrow or what negative, if it's a fraction or you could have negative 10, someone else could have negative 1 tenth, right? This one is opening up. It has a vertex at 0, negative 2. So this one, when I write my graph, I have x squared. I know it's definitely going to be plus and negative 2. I'm going to find those other values. 